just another day in paradise. As soon as we get to celebrate the repeal of mask mandates and our kids can finally go back to school and see each other's faces, inflation hits an all-time high. The Fed raises interest rates and this guy, well, he decides now's a good time to invade a country that has no interest in being a part of Russia. And while most of this is scary, what does it actually mean as it pertains to the impact on real estate? The answer to this question is a pretty tall order. So I had to dig pretty deep to find information that directly addresses all of the issues we're experiencing. In this video, I'm gonna give my best prediction to help you navigate this volatile landscape we're about to see. So stay tuned. When it comes to buying a home, the price is obviously a major variable. And in many ways, the cost of the money that you're borrowing in order to purchase the home can be just as important. So as interest rates rise, understanding how this will affect you as a buyer or a seller needs to be taken into consideration because the total acquisition cost, including accrued interest, can grow significantly as rates rise. Now, normally I would say increased costs to borrowing money would lead to a market top or even a market drop. However, this isn't a market we've seen in a long time or perhaps any time at all. Inflation's at all-time highs, rates are at or near all-time lows, inventory is at all-time lows, supply chain shortages seemingly won't let up anytime soon. Oh yeah, and a potential war on top of all of this is causing panic in equities markets. Things are far from normal, and so contrary to what I'd normally assume, I actually think that all of this is going to end up pushing up the prices of homes even higher in the long run. But first, let's get back to interest rates. And to preface, I'll repeat what many financial professionals will tell you. The rise of the federal funds rate is different from the rise in home loan interest rates. So for example, a half a point rise in the Fed funds rate does not equal a half a point rise in home loan interest rates. There will be times where one fluctuates and the other one does not. You see, the federal funds rate affects the cost of money that banks borrow and in turn they'll likely pass that additional cost on to the consumer by raising rates and adding fees. Part of this becomes a little bit of an anticipation game as well because banks don't want to be caught off guard lending low when rates go higher or vice versa so they'll try to predict what the Fed will do next by either raising or lowering rates. Sometimes you'll see this take place before the move is even made by the Fed. And I'm of the belief that we're gonna see a series of home interest rates increasing and decreasing as volatility becomes the new norm. We covered rates, now let's talk about inflation for a moment because this is the reason why interest rates and home prices can increase simultaneously. Yes, I believe both will increase at the same time, which usually doesn't make any sense, but as I've talked about on this channel before, inflation essentially causes the growth of the money supply that ultimately leads to increased value of equities, assets, and regular goods and services. But the one key factor that I think we're in the process of experiencing is a surge in the cost of living and labor. Those two things are still in what I consider to be a value surge period, um, that they're still increasing and ongoing. So, you know, for example, rental prices have skyrocketed. So has the cost of goods. So while increased rates generally make borrowing money more expensive and thus home buying less attractive, the cost of rent is still outpacing the cost of buying a home, even with higher rates. So pair that with the fear of rates climbing even higher, super low inventory, and the inability to build homes fast enough to meet demand, and you'll see why prices climbing as interest rates increase is actually a very realistic scenario. So now we've discussed rates and inflation. It's time to talk about this guy. Now, my understanding of geopolitics is not very deep, but what I do know is the loss of production from Russia would complicate supply chains even further. And if a major conflict does ensue, the American Federal Reserve will likely slow down the tapering as the stock market negatively reacts to war causing inflation to continue to rise or stay the same as the cost of living becomes exceedingly out of reach. Just using the price of oil as an example, 
In wartime, this will skyrocket, and the cost of oil has already doubled in the past six months. There will be many other commodities that experience a steep increase in similar fashion. So now it's time to nerd out, and I have a few charts that I wanted to share with you that give us some direction and hopefully a game plan on what we can expect next. So here's a chart that shows what fixed mortgage rates have looked like since 1965. You can see that they peaked in the mid 80s at around 18.5% and have since dropped all the way down to 2.5%, but have recently seen a quick move up back into the mid 3.5% range. This graph shows the median sales price of homes over the same time period. You can see that there has been a continuous increase as time goes on, but a few notable drops one in the early 90s and another in 2008 through 2010 time period during the financial crisis. Now, when we lay these charts on top of each other, what you can see is just how uncorrelated interest rates and home prices can be. Yes, there are times like in 2012 to 2015, that time frame where you can see the drop in rates looks like a steep increase in prices. However, when you look at most points in which rates saw large increases, home sales just seem to continue going up even with rates above 18%. But we don't just have interest rates to contend with. What about the effects of Russia and Ukraine? Personally, this had me more concerned than rising interest rates because I can foresee all assets and equity markets taking a hit. So I found a really interesting chart that showed what certain wartime events had as an effect on the stock market. And I was surprised at how little the effect actually was with a few key exceptions, of course. For example, Iraq's invasion of Kuwait back in the early 1990s led to a 16.9% pullback, and the 9-11 attacks led to an 11.6% pullback. Substantial, to say the least. But other than these major events, all others since the 1960s have led to a less than 5% stock market drop on average. And when you look again at the housing chart, well, I could only see a couple of small drawdowns that coincided with events involving American interactions such as Desert Storm and 9-11. So to draw a conclusion here, I feel as though here's what we're going to see. Rates will see another increase, causing half of buyers to hurry up and buy before they climb even higher, and then the other half of buyers to decide to pause a bit. All the while, rental prices will continue to increase. And an event such as escalating tensions in Ukraine will cause the Fed to slow down their tapering efforts, causing rates to drop again, and thus a flurry of buying, before rates climb up again, causing an overall increase in home sales, potentially a very steep one, and then housing prices may level off a bit. But again, I still don't think that we're going to find a solution to the supply shortages anytime soon. And this is what ultimately will cause housing prices to go even higher in the long run until production can increase fast enough to keep up with the demand. So I hope this was helpful and answer some of the questions you've been asking yourself. Well, we continue to get hit with a barrage of weird events, but one thing is for sure, I will continue to keep searching for direction in order to help you navigate. So thank you again for watching and I'll talk to you soon.